after seeing this movie, I think I'm gonna have to stop eating meat. I mean, I want a personal Okja of my own. But hot dogs and hamburgers taste so damn good. What is up everybody? Random Random Man here, bringing you my review for Okja. Now the plot basically follows Mija, played by An Seo Young, a young Korean farm girl who is taking care of a massive animal named Okja, whom she considers her best friend. However, one day this super pig is kidnapped by a powerful multinational corporation that intends to use Okja as a means to feed the rest of the world. So, Mija risks everything to get her best friend back. Going into this movie, I had quite a bit of interest with it after its first trailer dropped and it immediately became one of my most anticipated films of the year. I also was invested in what was happening with this movie when it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival a month ago. It got booed twice over there. The first time it got booed was because uh, the aspect ratio with the screen was off, it was a projection error, but the second time it got booed was when the Netflix logo showed up seconds in. Now, movies getting booed and standing ovations for that matter are common at this film festival, but this is a really important movie for Netflix as not only are they providing it with their streaming service, but it was one of the more high profile films that they've made as of late where they were heavily involved in its production. This movie also comes from director Bong Joon-ho, who previously directed Snowpiercer starring Chris Evans and a huge ensemble cast. It also had a really poignant topic and I really enjoyed it for what it did. With this huge cast of players in this film, I'm going to start out with the youngest member of this group and the main character, Misha, played by An Seo Young. I'm pretty sure I butchered those names, but I tried my best. She really impressed me in this film. Not only with the physical acting she had to do with a lot of running around during the chase scenes with Okja, but with the subtle acting she gave early on in the movie when we're first introduced to her, the world she is living in, and the relationship she has with this massive creature. Even though Okja is clearly made with CGI, I believe the bond that these two shared with one another. You can feel that even when there's barely any words being said on screen early on, that these two have a magical connection with one another. Likewise, the rest of the cast here is also up to snuff. There's just a lot of people to go through here. We have Tilda Swinton, who plays the powerful CEO of the corporation that's trying to make a profit off of Okja. She's suitably over the top as this CEO. She is just a natural at playing this type of character. Paul Dano plays the leader of an animal rights activist group, the ALF, who is trying to take Okja back and expose Swinton's character for all her nefarious deeds. He is superb in this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal has a really pivotal supporting role as this really zealous zoologist and TV personality that is like Swinton over the top and very <laughs> in his attitude. He <laughs> this He just is something else in this film, and that is definitely a good thing coming from Jake Gyllenhaal. We also have Byung Hee Bong, Steven Yoon as a, par a member of a the ALF. I really enjoyed him in The Walking Dead. He is outstanding here. Lily Collins, ah, uh, Lily Collins. She plays another member of the ALF here. She is also very strong. Yoon Ji Moon, Shirley Henderson. For all you Harry Potter fans out there, you may know Henderson as Moaning Myrtle from those films. <laughs> she plays another off character here too, but she is really strong. We have Daniel Henschel as another ALF member. Devin Bostic as another ALF member. Choi Woon Sheik as Kim. And Finally, Giancarlo Esposito, who you may recognize as Gus from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. 
he is an associate of the corporation led by Swinton's character, and he also does a fine job. Basically, everyone in this movie is really well portrayed. The story here is very simple in concept, yet expands dramatically as the movie progresses, especially when it gets really thought-provoking. Director Bong Joon-ho also co-wrote the screenplay to this film and what he did in setting up the first few minutes or so with Tilda Swinton's character explaining the extensive plan she has and trying to genetically modify animals to stop world hunger is total BS yet shows off the weird tone that the rest of the movie does carry. It's also very exposition heavy yet it's necessary in this first section of the movie as it takes place 10 years before the rest of the movie transpires and then we are introduced to Misha and Okja themselves to get the movie going as once Okja is kidnapped, the film shifts into high gear. The movie is part social commentary on GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and part rescue slash chase movie where the ALF are trying to get Okja back with Misha's help. That makes this movie rarely ever boring. A lot of energy is exuded into this film with you really wanting to get Okja back because personally I found Okja to be a believable CGI character and just adorable at certain points despite being so gigantic but also because of what it has to say with that GMO social commentary and being essentially a satire we go from the luscious landscape of the area where uh, Misha and Okja are living in in the beginning of this movie to the streets of Seoul, South Korea to the streets of New York City in the USA, of course. This makes for the production design to be stellar and have really gorgeous cinematography that showed off its locations extremely well. Couple that with how well edited this movie is in transitioning from one location to another to its really engaging pacing. This film runs at about two hours and it brisked along at such a nice running time. And the film also is accompanied with a really good score. Speaking of music too, there was one moment in the movie that really did get to me and I felt was the a uh, magical moment of the film where Okja and the ALF and Misha are getting chased from the streets of Seoul, South Korea into an underground shopping center and suddenly towards the end of that scene John Denver's Annie song starts playing and fits into a perfect moment in my opinion that is in this film. I just heard Annie's song in uh, Free Fire from earlier this year and while that song is used prominently in that film, the one moment that this song is used in Okja just was mm, filled with a lot of emotion. It got me feeling some kind of way and that feeling remained strong with me from that moment on to the rest of the film. Really, the only issue I had with this movie, and it's minor in retrospect, is that there was a bit of a lull towards the end of the film, towards the beginning of the final act where it got super dark, super serious. It was still engaging with that area of the film, and it wasn't enough to derail it throughout, despite it having a lot of energy and style with how the rest of the movie before it came to be. Because when that serious moment came, the emotional core of the movie was reinforced. And then by the time the movie ended, it felt like it had gone full circle and the heart of the movie where Okja and Misha and their relationship was shown was resonating. That is what has ultimately stuck with me with Okja. Along with the social commentary, the heart of the movie made me really go places with the film where it had me laughing, it had me feeling for these characters, and it had me thinking about what the movie was trying to say. This movie being a Netflix release shouldn't be a hurdle to get people to watching it because Netflix is releasing it on their streaming service so you can watch it on any device you can stream Netflix on. And 
this is a legitimate film production. It's not like it was a made-for-TV film at all, as Okja was made for $50 million, so a lot of work and effort was put into this film. I think a lot of the budget went to actually creating Okja, because Okja is a CGI character, but I think as a film overall, it is just exceptionally well done. Plus, I've enjoyed quite a bit of Netflix's content they've been releasing as of late, like their documentary 13th from last year, which ended up being one of my favorite films of 2016 for being such a phenomenally poignant documentary. Likewise, Okja is one of my favorite movies of 2017 thus far. If you are in the mood to take a chance on a different concept. And if you are subscribed to Netflix especially, you have no excuse but to see this movie as soon as you can. If you don't have Netflix, find a friend, find a family member. I so, so hope that more people are able to see original content like this because they represent what creativity can be done with the medium of film. Once again, this is one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I love this flick. I highly recommend it. My final verdict for Okja is four and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Okja, Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.